Hello, good evening and welcome to an exciting day to talk about business and it's Business 101. My name is Blyden Okem. In Business 101, we look at the nitty gritty of businesses, the very foundation of certain businesses, the guidelines, how to take on these businesses, how to start it, what are the driving factors, the principles guiding the businesses, and most importantly, the profitability in business. Today, we'll be talking about rabbit farming in Nigeria. Many say rabbit farming is so important and profitable in the economy. It adds up to the food in the country. Well, we'll talk about what rabbit farming is and the details in it. Rabbit farming, otherwise known as corniculture, has gradually gained prominence in Nigeria over the years. There are over 39,000 rabbit farmers in Nigeria, according to multiple reports. Many Nigerians are venturing into the business due to the profit attached to it. And getting a small-scale rabbit business off the ground and completed from start to finish could cost some low amount of money according to information gathered. Today we'll look at the very details how to start up. There is a demand for rabbits and the market is huge according to experts. But rabbit farming entails expertise as well as training, as the rabbits are more delicate than any other livestock. Once a doe gives birth, the kittens need special care, as they are blind, and you begin to wonder what could happen next. They have no hair on their bodies. If the mother is disturbed, the baby will be abandoned. Rabbit farming, according to experts, can be done indoors or outdoors, as rabbits can be reared as pets or in small space, as they are friendly and can be trained by children or adults. We will be talking about everything you need to know about rabbit farming in Nigeria. And my guests will be standing by. And it would be when we return from this break, we'll extra the very fine details regarding the business of rearing rabbits in Nigeria. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, it's Business 101, and my name is Blyden Okem. Business 101 has been built around the context of information and drive, not just information, but the very principles of businesses, what a driving factor would be, and the opportunities in every aspect of business. Today we're talking about rabbit farming in Nigeria, and my guest is already here, Mr. Olusong Tayo, Temi Tayo. Good to have you on the show. Well, I'll be using the word, uh, I'll prefer to use Mr. Tayo in this one <laughs> for short. So Mr. Tayo is a businessman. He's a rabbit farmer, a medium scale rabbit farmer in Aquaibum State, a member of Rabbit Farmers Association of Aquaibum State. And we'll be talking about rabbit farming in Nigeria, the benefits that comes with it, the profitability of it, what rabbit farming is all about, the intricacies, the challenges and the principles of business. Mr. Tayo, good to have you on the show again. Thank you very much. Uh, we've been looking forward to having this conversation about rabbit farming. Uh, for many, rabbit farming is quite profitable. It's a profitable venture for others. Not many people get to see the popularity of it because you go to the markets, you do not really see rabbits being sold all around. And a question that could come to mind would be, why go into rabbit? What are the importance of it? Based on food security in the country, yes, it makes sense because it offers meat. But beyond that, as a business, because many people are looking forward to money, why should one go into rabbit farming? How important is it? Well, rabbit farming has the potential to generate income. It has the potential to create employment hmm. and also to help our economy. From a business point of view now, because the idea would be, if I have to go into a fishery, I have an idea I have people who are going to buy. If I have to go into um, animal husbandry, other livestock apart from rabbits, which seem to be popular, cattle and the rest. There's a certainty that I have a number of people who are interested in buying it. So what could be the attraction when it has to do with rabbits? Well, there are some people who request for rabbit meat. Some buy for pets. It's selling. Yes, there are markets available for it. So it's not a business that one will do and you will not sell. Let's, let's look into context because you are doing the business. For you in that context, as a medium scale farmer, we had a conversation before the show. You talked about uh, having up to 100 rabbits and rearing them and, and selling them before we get to talk about the challenges surrounding this business. How do you get to sell it? Do you have enough markets to sell it? Well, I have markets to sell. In fact, sometimes I could not meet up with demands. Yes, many at times people will call me either for meat or for breeding stock. I will just tell them I don't have now. You have to be patient. Okay, let's get into the business now. So while we're talking about rabbit businesses, what is it all about rabbit farming? What is it all about? What are the necessities in this one? So from your standpoint, let's talk about the challenges of rabbit farming. You as a farmer, not many people are interested in the business because they don't know the value in it. You say it's profitable. And the other point, people go into it because of meat. What is the biggest benefits of rabbits compared to other animals? There, there are goats in the animal husbandry business. Uh, there are goats, there are sheep, there are cattle. But rabbit, it seems to have its peculiarity. People talk about the quality of the meat. How good is it? The meat of rabbit is a lean meat, a white meat, okay. almost cholesterol free. Hmm. So rabbit, eating rabbit meat will help your skin, help your heart function, even your brain function. So there are so many benefits of rabbit. The urine is useful. The faces is useful. Okay. So, Talking about usefulness of it, let's talk about starting uh, a rabbit farm. What are the requirements for starting a rabbit farm? Because you look at it, the first concern would be money for many people. Yeah. Put it side by side with other businesses. For example, you're talking about if you have to have a herd of goats, it could be a humongous amount of money to have a lot of them and the lifespan and probably reproductive cycle. But looking at the rabbits, uh, the scenario surrounding rabbit farming, how much is involved? Because costing capital has always been the conversation for businesses. 
For many, according to many conversations, it is quite easy to start with rabbit. How much would one need to start at least from a small scale before talking about commercial uh, rabbit farming? Well, to start from a small scale fa rabbit farming, you don't need much. What you need, since it is a small scale rabbit farming that you're going into, you need at least a male and a female, that is a doe and a buck, at most two does and a buck. A doe is what? Is a female rabbit okay and the, the a buck, buck is, is a male, male rabbit. rabbit okay so now if you want to go into that business that is rabbit farming there are so many things you have to consider mm -hmm. like you want to go into the business you have to make research about the business now because analysis is fundamental to every business okay now there are some questions you need to ask yourself before you enter into the business mm -hmm. like why should i keep rabbits okay now, if you ask yourself, why should I keep rabbits? Another question you need to ask yourself is, what is the reason for me keeping rabbits? Mm. Is it for meat or for pets? If for meat, what type of breed do I need to go for? Okay. That will give me FCR, that is feed conversion ratio. Oh. That is when they eat little, they convert it to meat even within short period of time possible because you are into business time counts mm. so now if it is for pets you look at what type of breed do i need that will be good for pets now you have to, you have to ask yourself another question i want to go into this business what type of house will i house will i house my rabbit okay. because you have different type of housing for rabbit you choose then type of feed that i need to feed my rabbit with that will give me high return mm. after then you look at common disease that rabbits have then look at the kind of animals you can what kind of animals can i keep alongside with rabbits then is there a market for for rabbits look at it what is my market target then after finding your market target then look at how many numbers of rabbit do i need to be able to meet up with this target after then, if you can answer all these questions, then you are good to go about the business. All right. Let's start with the first question you mentioned. The quality of rabbits, the breed. Because it makes a mainstay in the conversation. It therefore means that there are different kinds of breeds. What are the breeds available in terms of rabbit, rabbit farming? Which one is more workable, gives you better profit, better outcome? Because it's all about input and output. Well, when we talk about breeds, we have many breeds like New Zealand White, New Zealand Black, we have Dodge, Alumino, Chestnut Agouti, many breeds. But since you are going for business and if you are going for meat, go for a medium rabbit. Don't go for a, light, a giant rabbit because if you go for a giant rabbit, there is tendency of them not giving you what you want as a businessman. Hold on. He said that one shouldn't go for a giant rabbit, they should go for a medium rabbit. Yes. Because there's a tendency, it won't give you what you want. So the question would be, what would one want? Because ideally, from a layman's perspective, I'm not a rabbit farmer, but I would think if you ask me which one I would go for, I'll go for a giant rabbit. Because the idea is it's going to be very big. I'll get something out of it as quick as possible. One meat would be bouncing. So what's the difference in this one? Yes, you are right. Uh, a giant rabbit, you can get quality meat. I mean, good. I mean, good size of meat from okay. from a giant rabbit. But being a farmer, they eat more because uh -huh. of their size. They eat more. Mm. Then the period at which they attain maturity for production takes long, like seven to nine months. While really? medium size takes from like four to five months before they come on in eat and you start production. Now. Giant size rabbits sometimes they will not give you good numbers of kids and you are into business. Okay. But if you can do it this way, pick a giant rabbit, medium, I mean medium size, cross them, then use the offspring for your meat line. It will be fine. Okay. Let's talk about the structure of a rabbit. What are the considerations when or rearing a rabbit rather? What are the consideration when you're looking at this business? In terms of the housing, you've talked about the housing, you talked about the breed. You started with asking those questions. So let's look at the next. 
the housing. What are the considerations when looking at the housing of a rabbit? Because many people think you can rear a rabbit anywhere in your house. So if you're looking at it from a business point of view, what do you consider? What is the housing mode all about? Well, as I said earlier on in point number three, that housing is one of the questions you need to ask yourself when going into this business. All right. What was point number two? Point number two is a uh, reason for keeping rabbits. Okay. Why should I keep rabbits? Okay. We've gone past that. Let's talk okay. about number three then. Now, housing, there are different kind of system which people use in breeding or rearing or raising their rabbits. We have the deep litter system and modern cage system. Which one is deep litter system? The deep litter, litter, uh, sorry, deep litter system is a system whereby you place your rabbit in one a confined place and you make them to be free, maybe with uh, ease on the for the flooring, you know, something like that. Okay, go ahead. Then a modern cage system is a kind of system where they are in a cage and their droppings, that is their urine and feces, can drop easily. The screen size has the ability to do what? To drop their, their, their droppings without retaining it. Because when they have contact with the urine and some other hanging things, they groom themselves, mm -hmm. they ingest. That is when they have issue. Okay. Now, if you are a business person, you shouldn't go for deep litter because in deep litter, litter system, they, they can easily contract disease. I wouldn't advise you to go for that. And it might require much labor. Yes, right? and it will cost and you money. You have to clean it so often. Yes, and also, also like that. So, and in deep litter system, uh, rec record keeping will be very difficult. Because why, why is that? Record keeping, you don't know the, the kids of this one. You don't know the father. You just see, you wake up, you see uh, rabbits all around. Rabbit. Your rabbit. Because when somebody wants to buy a and ask me, ask you, where is the father of this one that you want to sell for me? Mm -hmm. Where is the mother of this one? Because some people will, will like to see the father and the mother. Father is or the quality or the future, features of the father. They can be tempted or convinced to say, oh, actually this one too will be good. So in a modern teaching system, it is very easy mm -hmm. for you to determine that. And proper high hygiene will be acquired, I mean, will be maintained in uh, modern caging system or like depleter. Okay. And in rabbits, prevention, preventive measure is cheaper than cure in rabbits. Is it all about rabbit? I think it's the case for everything. Pre preventative <laughs> measures seem to be the solution to most problems. So because most of the rabbits, when they are sick, that you treat, might not recover after treating them. Okay. So even while you are trying to administer uh, medication, die. I mean, rabbits are very fragile. They are very fragile. Compared to other livestock. Yes, they are very fragile. So, uh, what am I saying? Uh, you need to go for a modern cages system because it will help you to keep your record intact and help you to maintain high hygiene uh, system. When you talk about modern caging system, are you referring to one with different segments or maybe they call it rooms for these rabbits well when i talk about modern caging system i'm talking about a kind of caging system that allows both urine and their faces to do what to drop that is it is not hanging around the corner where my god can be bred in the uh, around the cage all right let's look at cost effectiveness because all these things will boil down to cost though you've said that uh, rabbit farming isn't that expensive. One can start at a low cost. But the conversation is, looking at the housing setup, how much would it cost to have a decent housing setup? Maybe for 10 rabbits. Let's say you don't necessarily have to, or maybe for five. You want to start with maybe two, two dough and uh, a buck. And a buck. Three. Okay, three. If you are going for that, two dough and a buck, Definitely because these animals, they are fecundity, that is, they are prolific. They can produce large numbers within a short period of time. So at least you need like 12 cells room. 12 cells. Okay. So, I mean, sorry, at least 6 cells. Is, so it's, you can use that for a starting. If uh, the two dudes occupy two rooms, the buck occupies one, you still have three extra. When they start giving birth, you can move them. What are these houses made of? 
That's a conversation. Different materials. But when going into rabbit, you have to also make research about the kind of materials you use. And knowledge is important. Yes. Because there are some materials, if you go for them, they, may, they might appear good or something uh, that can go for rabbit when you see them. But by the time you start using them in the space of six months, you need to change them. Okay. So there are some materials that is needed like uh that means you need someone with experience with that experience you yes like the the the, the floor the net mesh for the floor should be something around half inch by half inch okay. with the thickness of 1.5 mm at least so an average cost of that would be what well depending on locations okay let's move to the rabbit itself because when you're talking about rabbit businesses it makes sense to look at prices and markets First conversation would be, how much is a full-blown mature rabbit, the male and the female? Because in Mexico, when you do look at the one plus one is equal to two, yes. that's the conversation. I'm looking at my cost, how much I bought it, how much I, I fed it, at the end of it, I have to sell it. How much is a full rabbit? Well, if you are buying a full rabbit, depending on the reason why you are buying a full rabbit, if for breeding, or for meat okay if for breeding it's another price why is, why the difference because if you come to me and you tell me sir i need a rabbit i will ask you is it for breeding or you want to eat if you tell me it's for breeding and you want to go if you tell me it's for meat you want to go and eat and your intention is to use it for breeding mm -hmm. actually i will give you what is not good in my farm for production as a businessman because oh. you tell me you want to go and eat Maybe the, a spent rabbit that is not giving me results. I don't need keeping results such rabbits. Yes. Of death. Yes. Okay. Or mounting females and there's no or or rabbit that, that is neutered already. When you say neutered, what do you mean? Maybe uh, let me just say castrated. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Technical words there. What it has to do with rabbits, but I get it. So continue the conversation. So the price of a rabbit for farming and a rabbit for meat what's the difference what is the price well the price for breeding stock is higher than that of meat okay because we are trying to promote meat for now so the price of meat is cheaper we sell per kilo life weight so a kilogram of a life weight rabbit is 1800 naira a lightweight life weight that is life this weight. rabbit is still alive okay. not slaughtered putting it on scale whatever is that a full macho rabbit depending on how many kilo okay. the rabbit weighs an average kilo of a rabbit is what of a mature mature rabbit. rabbit ranging from 2 kg to 3.5 there are some with 5 kg there was a time my mentor gave me 5 kg rabbit my mentor a rabbit it I must need. be very big very big i hear there's a breed that gets to seven kg yes do you know what even in our farm other rabbit farmers around let them ask them there are sometimes they will say oh this rabbit is good growing fast it's big i will not sell it they keep it and when it's time for breeding they cross it and they won't have results some some will not even give birth some will give birth to one and die so in other words it could even be a problem when the rabbit is too big that is why i said earlier on giant rabbits might not give you results coming into rabbit farming business okay though we'll have to go back to your list but let's look at one conversation it would be that of feed it's part of the running cost in the business of a rabbit farming let's talk about feed i was reading through a documentary recent going through a documentary recently and in nigeria it stated that feed are getting expensive not necessarily expensive but on the other hand let's begin with a conversation about feed being expensive on overall, not just for rabbits, feeds for other livestock as well as even birds are quite expensive because of the inflation in the country. But a conversation regarding rabbit is that not many people are going into rabbits any longer and manufacturers and producers are slowing down regarding feed production. So many farmers have to begin to make their own feed. So let's talk about what rabbits eat because it forms a crux of the running cost. What do we feed this rabbit with? Well, 
feeding rabbit i think is uh, a little bit cheaper on like chicken and other livestock because there's a way you can go about rabbit feed there's a way you can formulate yourself even with materials around you and you still have results okay there are some quite numbers of grasses that they eat like tridax potato leaves uh cover crops as as they call it uh christmas melon many of them in fact most of the leaves that both eat they eat but i wouldn't advise you being a businessman to feed your rabbit only on leaves use both concentrates and leaves when you're doing this it reduces the cost of your feeding when you say concentrates what do you mean and how do i get the concentrate when i especially when i have an idea that most farmers are making their own feed yes concentrate is mixture of different kind of materials like uh uh maize soya beans pkc mitova and so many other materials ingredients you mix them in ratio not just so to buy where do i get these ingredients there are some markets available okay and in feeding also while you're giving them concentrate make sure you give them uh weighted grass and haze because though haze is said to have no nutritional value but it helps their digestive system and also makes them to drink more water and when they drink more water they increase in weight okay. so when you introduce both these uh, winter uh, green vegetative matters and uh, ace it reduces your cost of running and your rabbit will be healthy and fine this requires a lot of knowledge for you to do it because the mention most leaves he's mentioning i do not have any idea of them and I believe many people don't. It means to go into the business of rabbit farming, first concern would be knowledge. You have to seek those who are in the business who understand it to guide you, show you the way. Well, according to local parlance, they say, follow who no road. But we'll be going on a short break when we return. The conversation continue about rabbit farming. Don't go anywhere. Business exists only to meet the needs of the people, but there's an extra advantage if your product and services are pitched on a platform that gives you the added advantage over your competitors. For your desired return on investment and so much more, advertise on Spectrum Television, on Star Times DTH Channel 421 and on Free to Air with a frequency of 12733 Spectrum Television broadening your horizon Every day we bring you up to date information on topical issues affecting the common Nigeria from issues on politics, Hello, Nigeria. Sure. Security. Security. Is security. Education, health, lifestyle, and so much more. Join Janice Kobum and Uyai Anyakin every weekday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Rise and Shine Daily, exclusive on Spectrum Television. Welcome back is Business 101 and my name is Blyden Uken. I've been talking with a man who is in the business of rabbit rearing. His name is Timmy Tyle. He's a pastor and a rabbit farmer. 
a member of Rabbit Farmers Association in Akwaibu. Mr. Tayo, so good to have you on the show. You're yeah, welcome. Sir. Uh, we've had through some decent topics around rabbit rearing. We've talked about financing, or we've not talked about financing yet, but we've talked about feed. We talked about different possibilities regarding the housing. We also talked about the need for knowledge regarding rabbit businesses. Let's get to the next talking to talking point, Mr. Tayo. It would be that of diseases. We've looked at the housing system. There are urines. There are this can affect the system let's talk about the diseases disease management because it has been one of the biggest problems of businesses especially in the area of animal rearing even in livestock is the first concern birds is the first concern in rabbits let's talk about the impact of diseases how they're being exposed what causes them and how we can control it mm -hmm. as i said earlier on if you are putting them in a cage system that they will not have contact with their urine and some other droppings hanging around the cage. By then, you must have been through with issues of disease related. Mm. Now, some of the diseases that they have and they share with other animals like poultry is coccidiosis. Okay. What's that about? Well, coccidiosis. Coccidiosis. They, yes. They do pick down on sounds like a respiratory disease yes yes it causes cough or not cough what's the impact is it affects their intestine oh yes and they begin to pass a kind of uh, discharge from the discharge that is when you see that this coccidiosis because there are some things you will see inside to determine that this is coccidiosis so this usually occurs when you keep them in a place that is not highly, I mean, not clean. Okay. That's why I said uh, high hygiene should be maintained in rabbits, in rabbit farming. So if you have two numbers of uh, winners in a place, you will have such issue. When you say winners, what are you referring to? Rabbits that you have taken the the uh, you you you've taken from their mother okay maybe they have spent about six weeks with their mother or eight weeks then you okay you want the mother to rest so that you can prepare the mother for another phase of production you win them from their mother okay what's the place of vaccination having to talk about disease control well unlike uh, poultry uh, we don't vaccinate rabbits you don't yes some do because there was a time how each eat and many people were like eh, let's go for vaccine some said if we go for vaccine it means that this issue will stay so there was a discussion among the community rabbit farmers community yes that if we go for vaccine yes it means the issue would continue it will continue so it means we have to be you know we have to buy continue buying vaccine for our rabbits to get adapted to vaccination yes. that's what you're saying yes well what a thought path and i think it should be researched more regarding that well some do vaccinate the the the, the rabbits I, I think if we have in don't let me just generalize if we have in nigeria i'm sure very few all right let's talk about market targets because it's basically where the driving conversation is everyone wants to get a result profit by selling you buy low you sell high that's how to make profit or you put in fixed costs and running costs that is cheap and the output which is when you're selling it it increases and you make profit out of it so talk to us about market targets well when it comes to market targets like we have the meat aspects we have the project students aspects okay because early this at the middle of this month, from Anambra State, I was asked to send our 36 winners. Which are young rabbits. Young rabbits. Okay. Which, when I check our farm... They're for experiments. Yes. I just have to call other farmers. Before I could sleep that day, it was after 10, because I needed to send it through KTC the following morning. Okay. Like, uh, sometimes from Ikorapa, then they do call me. I send to them. 
That's your problem you said, invest. Yes. And at times I do approach all these uh, market people that sells uh, Noila six weeks, I mean three weeks Noila, Vrellas. Uh, I approach them, give them at a reasonable price and they buy and they sell at the price they like. Okay. Let's talk about productivity regarding these businesses. Productivity, it's one key attraction in rabbit farming, reproduction anyway. It would be the cycle. So how long does it take for a rabbit to get pregnant and start bearing children? Secondly would be, what's a reproductive cycle? Okay. How long will a rabbit, yeah. will it take a rabbit to start production? From birth, yes. Well, with a good breed and proper feeding, clean water and everything intact, within four to six months for a medium rabbit okay while giant rabbit takes like seven to nine months yeah so we're looking at medium rabbits now four to five months they are good once they are up to like 2.5 kg 2 kg and above you can start production so the gestation period where they get pregnant how long does it hold the gestation period is within a month within 30 days some 32 days if it's exceed 32 days there's a way we induce okay you induce them to give birth yes okay let's look at uh, the number of kittens that come out the liters how many well in our farm we have experienced one and we have experienced 12 okay so for a businessman in this aspect if you have one you know that's bad if you have two, it's not encouraging. So what do you do in that case? <laughs> if I have one, excuse me, I give another chance. Okay. And the rabbit still give me one. Mm. I know that's a bad market. Okay. If anybody calls so for me, yeah. I call it out. Okay. So looking at the situation where you have a breed that's giving you up to 12, does it also ensure that the kitten, when the kitten grows up, it can also follow that same cycle? I hate goats, for example. He said, oh, this one, uh, it's always give birth to one, and this one gives birth to two. And the cycle continues. Is it the same scenario when it has to well, do with rabbits? When you have a rabbit that gives birth to two, if someone will start booking, I need one from there. Okay. For me, I wouldn't encourage any reasonable person to go for such. Because when you have a rabbit that gives up to 12, it will be challenging for the rabbit to nurse them. And the growth will not be as fast as the one with two or five the rabbit with seven kids and the rabbit with two kids though two is not good but i'm just making an example the one with two kids and the one with seven kids when the one with seven kids when the kids are up to like five weeks the one with two kids will be competing in size with them within within two weeks will be competing because why the number is large the growth also will not be as fast. What's what's affecting the, the growth? Is it how the wind from the mother? Uh, competition for food? Yes. Okay. And also, you know, when they are two, they can have more than enough. Enough milk from the mother. Okay. But when you have seven... So how long do they milk from the mother? For how long? Depending. At least from five to six, some allow them to stay till eight weeks. For six weeks with a good body weight, you are good to, to win them, to separate them. I hear uh, the doe, after giving birth to a series of kids, can get pregnant immediately afterwards, after, after 30 yes, days. Yes, that, that is one of the questions which I think was listed because, uh, like, how many times can they give birth in a year? Yeah. Me, I think from five, four, at most six times in a year. And there are some that goes beyond that that is they do back to back that is the rabbit give back today <laughs> they 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 give the do back to male that same day and the next one month the rabbit give back again so it's not too good you are stressing the rabbit not too good the not rabbit too. is going through a lot of stress yes sir okay we wouldn't want to stress the rabbit <laughs> but let's look at one aspect of a conversation because our time is fast spent it would be this if you have to advise someone who wants to start out into the, this business 
rabbit farming. What would be the advice you give to the person? Well, as I said earlier on, you want to start a rabbit business, first of all, make a research about the business. After making the research, ask yourself some questions and have the ability to provide answer to it. Okay. Now, if you can do that, then you are good to go. And probably the question I could have asked is a common mistake that most starters do when they go into this business. Common mistake is because Mr. A is doing it, I also want to do it. Mm -hmm. And because this thing, their fecundity, they can produce fast before you know, they say, I spend much, no market, they become frustrated and some will just sell both the rabbit any and the cage and say, I don't want to see, because they did not plan before. Okay. No idea of market. No, nothing, nothing. They just double into it and, <laughs> and they back. Okay. Because at one point it seems so easy and good. So everyone would want to try. But on the other hand, there are nitty gritties in it, something to learn about it and be driven in it. Let's talk about one last convention. It would be about you now as a farmer, a rabbit farmer. Here is it. What business principles guide you in decision making in rabbit business? Well, maybe not just rabbit business. With other businesses, how do you approach it? What guides you, the principles that guide you in this business? Well, what guides me in this business is I have the plan that I am breeding rabbit and I have a focus market and also I have colleagues who comes, they buy from me, I don't care how much they are selling, they can even bring their colleagues, I mean, uh, their clients to my house or my farm. I will be inside, they will sell, and they go. The next thing is that I receive a lot. I don't want to know how much you sell. So they are doing the marketing aspect of Yes, it. they are doing the market, they are good. So I'm just at home. They come, they buy, and they go. They send me my, my own. How much you sell is your business. All so right. it keeps them bringing people in because of the. So you encourage other people to benefit from this system. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming on the show, Mr. Tai. You're welcome. This is where we draw the curtain on today's edition of Business 101, talking about rabbit farming in Nigeria, the importance of it, the nitty gritty of it, the guiding principles towards it, the production and reproduction cycle, the feed, feed making, and everything you need to know about rabbit making. It was a pleasure being your host, and thank you for being a part of it. This way, we call it done.